Hi, welcome back to another uh, PhotoLink video. This one is again on the Rawhide Converter. This is part two. What I'd like to do is I would like to um, explore this program in a little more detail. Um, what we're going to do here is we're going to open up an image. I'm going to click on File and I'm going to say Open Photos. And we're going to pull up this 10 megabyte image that was done on a Sony Alpha A300. And it's presented to us on the screen. Now what you'll find is when you have multiple copies or when you have multiple images in here, I should not probably bring this up now, but when you do, as you look through them without making them the target image of the corrections, you can view the thumbnail over here. But anyways, we have our image loaded now. Let's take a look at white balance, first of all. Uh, if you click on here, you get As Shot. Automatic, it's going to determine the white balance for you, um, as it's doing now. Um, if you go Selected Point, uh, what it's going to ask you to do is click on a neutral area, like a white, a gray, or a black, something that has uh, no color to it so that it can determine what the um, what the white balance is from that point. Uh, what you can also do is click on uh, color, hue, uh, and temperature, and so on. And what you can do is you can come up here and take your slider over to a white balance that you might uh, think is correct or whatever. Or by clicking on this button again, you can get a reset. Um, now, uh, over here, what you will have, and there's always a slight delay before that occurs. Uh, what you can have here, we, you, you can also adjust your hue. Um, if you will notice, I will take it in this direction. And what I get is it takes it towards magenta. Um, or if I go in this direction, uh, towards uh, uh, green. Um, but what you can do is you can click here to reset it. So we will go back to As Shot uh, for our uh, white balance. Uh, the RGB multipliers, um, I'm a little bit lax on exactly what those are, but I believe that they are the multipliers that come out of the CCD on the camera. What you can do is you can change those if necessary by clicking on this button and adjusting your multipliers. Now what we can do here is um, we can uh, come in and play with our exposure levels. Uh, if we click here, this is going to use the camera's uh, EV for highlights. Uh, you know, if you click on that box. But what we can also do here is play with our exposure level. They refer to it as push in this direction, which brightens. Or pull in this direction, which makes it darker. Or double click resets it. Your highlight compression is basically how it, it treats with the uh, highlights, um, or, hi or the compression of the highlights. If you go in this direction, uh, you'll notice they're more linear. If you go in this direction, um, what you will find is they have uh, more to a curve to them. So what we can do is we can reset that. Here what you can do is you can do a shadow boost. Uh, by moving this around, what you can do is you can boost the shadows. Uh, you can typically see it in this doorway here. Or what you can do is you can reset the shadow boost. These are kind of obvious, contrast and separation. Uh, we can control our contrast here. This is uh, adding contrast. This is sub subtracting contrast. And then uh, naturally you can do your saturation color saturation. Here it increases it. Okay. Which now we've got an increase in saturation. Take it all the way. Or what we can do is we can come down here and we can uh, decrease it. Or we can click here and reset it to the camera's point. Uh, here we have uh, sharpness, which is the it's an unsharp, uh, unsharp mask. Uh, basically, what you can do is you control the level of the unsharpening mask with this slider here, or the radius, that's how many pixels around uh, the, uh, un, uh, around the uh, point that you're sharpening are affected, 
And uh, here is your unmasked or unsharp mask threshold, which is how big the pixels actually have to be before we start sharpening. Uh, this is a great tool so you don't get into noise emphasis. Uh, noise reduction here, we have uh, noise reduction strength, uh, radius, and threshold. Again, uh, the uh, threshold is how fine a pixel it's going to apply to. Noise reduction radius is how many pixels around it and the strength of your noise reduction. And similarly, chroma noise reduction and uh, radius uh, works the same way. This is chroma or color noise reduction and this is basically normal noise reduction which many times is uh, edge noise, noise, or noise reduction. Demosaicing is going to be the subject of probably the next video because it's much more advanced. But here by selecting one of these buttons you're selecting the algorithm of which uh, this image is uh, um, being uh, demosaiced. That's converted from the raw to the image. And um, in many cases, um, in, in their documentation, they explain what each one of these does. Uh, it's a very, very powerful feature. And it's one thing that sets this program apart. Uh, dark frames background. Dark frames background is uh, basically, as I said in the last video, it's going to subtract frames from a processed but unexposed image to pull the background noise of the processor basically out of the image. We're going to probably discuss that more in the next video too, as well as color management and metadata. So this is the end of part two. Part three, I'm going to get into these final controls, uh, starting with um, uh, probably uh, demosaicing, and uh, then what I'll do is, uh, then, we'll, then we'll do more videos on uh, batch processing. Well, I thank you for watching, and uh, please visit my site, www.fotolink, and please download this wonderful program from uh, Frank Holub at his site that is um, listed in the front of the video on the title. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.